remember the terribly sober day that the doctor finally told me what was going on. He said, I had no stomach anymore. I couldn't eat or drink. And he didn't know when or if I'd ever be able to again. What do you say to that? I felt like there was no God or anyone to protect me anymore. For a bit, I lost faith in everything. I felt betrayed as though the promises made to me as a child were all lies. I was 18, hormonal, and comatose during my senior prom. I would have loved to shout out to those young, eligible med school bachelors. Hello, up here. I'm a person. I'm a woman. And legal. <laughs> One time, there was this really cute doctor, and he was about to come in and examine me. So I put on a little makeup, a little mascara, a little rouge, and he came in, looked at me, and said my bronchial tubes were entrancing. My epiglottis filled him with glee. He simply loved my larynx and went wild about my face. that would kill me if I ever dared to swallow it. Those basic human needs I couldn't fulfill reminded me of other primal needs I couldn't fulfill, like being outside, feeling the cool air on my skin. It's funny how we take the little things for granted. And ice like vinyl on the streets, cold as silver, white as sheets, rain like strings and I can start to like the clowns that came 
and then play the ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> and even the mimes. Well, not so much the mimes. <laughs> the only marking of time and sign of hope were the small triumphs, like being able to sit upright in a chair for the first time, or my vital signs getting a little bit better. And after months of not being able to talk, they finally took me off the ventilator. But within an hour, I talked so much, I used up all my oxygen, and they had to put me right back on. <laughs> Whenever we arrive